How's it going, everybody? Hope you're all doing well. So, bug out bag trauma kits. What do you need in one, realistically? I mean, do you need a full massive trauma kit to, you know, prepare against, you know, a massive firefight every five seconds? Or do you need literally just a tourniquet and that's all you should carry for lightweight purposes? We're going to dive into that and I'm going to explain what I specifically use and my recommendations behind it. So it's going to bro be broken up into two, like, sections within the video. The first portion is literally going to be the philosophy piece or honestly, what is a bug out bag meant for? Like re leading up to it, getting all the statistics, the weight, all this point A to point B, why are you choosing the certain items that you are? That's what we're going to discuss. But if you're not interested in that, go ahead and jump forward and we're just going to discuss about these specific items that I carry, which I would recommend the philosophy piece because it really meshes everything together. And it's going to make you more you know, trained to make decisions on what you're bringing with you. So let's dive into it. So why are we doing this? Why does this exist? Why am I choosing certain items? Well, if we look at the, like the down and dirty legitimately, what is a bug out bag? It is literally getting from point A to point B the quickest and the most effective way that I can. So the main thing is avoidance in the first place. Avoid potential threats as much as you can. You can mitigate that, which of course there's always gonna be those potentials that are just, hey, you can't eliminate threat, but you can seriously mitigate it, which if you're already massively mitigating that potential by performing certain tactics, maybe you're moving at night under night vision, you know, you're going around populated areas, you know, depending where you are, times of the year, that kind of stuff. It really comes into play as environmentals. Even where I am now, I can get away with having less things than maybe someone in a city. Like if you live in a populated city, you may need to plus up on some items because the potential threat level is higher than it is for me because I live in the Rocky Mountains out in the middle of nowhere. And literally if I leave this city where I am now, it is like 150 miles to the next city with little towns dotted you know, along the way that might have 250 people in them. <laughs> you know, And I can avoid those extremely easy. But then it also depends on the distance you're willing to travel. So with that, mine's just mainly set up by, for that. So philosophy wise, why are you going to carry this massive 10 pound thing if the whole idea is avoidance anyway? So the, the potential percentage of you actually using this is like 5%, which many of you will say, well, yeah, but if that 5% happens, now I have this, I'm good to go. Valid, that's why you should have some things. And we're gonna discuss that, but ultimately the mindset first is avoidance so then you can start to streamline your gear now the best thing is performance performance is all the way up here right and the best performing stuff is often the heaviest so what i try to do is most performing but lightest weight and a lot of people try that as well so the further you get those apart normally it is extremely expensive or extremely difficult to do to push the performance envelope but push the weight as in lower or lighter weight. So getting into that, my stuff is often very lightweight but it is necessary in my mind for what I have to go through. So now I carry specifically for those that are interested, you're probably skipping forward to this point, some of you, but what do I actually carry? Because that's the whole one of the whole reasons we're here. So along with the philosophy piece, which I already discussed, is what do I carry? I carry two kits on me. One is a pocket IFAC or a trauma kit that I kind of got the idea off of a friend and a coworker literally like seven or eight years ago. And I kind of merged it into my own platform. And then I also carry another IFAC inside this, which has a specific purpose behind it. I'm going to show you. It doesn't always ride like this. It has a reason behind it. So let's get into the cargo pocket trauma or IFAC or trauma kit. As you can see how small it is, normally this is paired with some kind of tourniquet. Uh, soft T wides are really great. Um, cats are often bigger and bulkier, so they don't work for concealment. And I also carry three tourniquets with me. 
as in cats. Those ones are on my gear. Now, gear related, I like cat tourniquets just because they work. One is on my carrier, which I'll show you here in a second. One's on my bag. And then I also have a soft T wide in my pocket. So I guess I would be two cats and one soft T wide. But what is in this thing? So very small amount. We have normal H&H &H gauze, which I'm not going to tear it out of this because a lot of the items are reflected here. So just give me a second. H&H &H gauze, you have um, quick clot, occlusive dressing, front and or exit and entrance wound, and then you have a small trauma-based dressing. This is a ni nice and little neat package that goes in there. Now for this piece, this will ride in my Hill People gear rig on the front dangler, which I modified with um, Velcro on the back so it will hold this very well and hold the dangler from Feral Concepts very nicely. That's where my tourniquet is, as you can see, and this will reside in there. Now there's two modes of transportation with this, and then I'll dive into the details real quick. The modes of transportation is, hey, here we go. This is in its training configuration or its storage configuration. It has this nice, you know, Ziploc bag that stays in there. So this is meant for when I'm not in an emergency situation, I'm training with it. But if it's go time and legitimately it's like stuff is happening, I'm going to, you know, go off to the side, step or step off to the side and perform sills or stop, look, listen and smell and relax and then prep my gear or my bug out bag for this performance time. Now it'll all, all the items will come out of this and they will get pre-staged properly in there for easy use. So first off, compressed gauze. This is just North American Rescue. You can use whatever you want. There's H&H &H gauze over here. They make really good stuff and it can be used in a lot of different ways. Now one other gauze, if I can get it because it's so slippery because of this, combat gauze. That's fairly common, and a lot of people think, hey, I'll just put a bunch of this in there. There's a lot of stuff you can do with compressed gauze that you can't do with combat gauze, mainly for, you know, head injuries and stuff like that. You do not use this, anything near the eyes, anything like that. This is meant for, you know, wound packing. Combat gauze is meant for getting in there and coagulating that blood. Normally used in conjunction with a tourniquet, depending on where it is, not in the chest cavity because you're going to lose like 45 yards worth of stuff and you're going to have a big mass in you if you just keep stuffing in the chest cavity. But compressed gauze can be wrapped, it can be duct taped over, it can be used as a pad itself. There's a lot of different uses. So getting into more of the potential, you know, Improvised medicine, you can really use that more effectively. Next is um, two chest seals, which entrance and exit wound, which is a pretty solid, like that'll knock you out extremely quickly because once you start getting, you know, tension in more thorax and, or it starts like compressing your lungs and stuff like that, you're pretty much out of the fight. But if you have something like this, you could postpone that, you know, to get to somewhere or a friend, family member, or whatever it is to maybe assist you. I'm not going to say it's a guarantee, but it's going to up your capabilities where you currently are right now. So that's what I carry. And then also a small um, mini compression bandage. Now you could also swap this out for Israeli bandage if you really want to, but it comes down to weight again. I'm very weight conscious, like we talked about in, in the... Uh, whole philosophy. So if you're complaining like, wait, that's too way light. Well, did you just watch the philosophy piece? Cause I explained why, why I'm going so light. So go back, take a look at that and then comment something very rude. That'd be more beneficial. But those are the four items, honestly, that are in it. Now, of course, gloves, arguable um, for myself. I'm probably not going to use it. Could you? Yes, for sterilization purposes and stuff like that. But I also carry antibiotics on me. So, hey, combat pill pack. If I get injured or something, hey, I'm immediately taking combat pill pack to stop or ward off that infection that is a potential hazard to me. So, literally this small piece, these small items go into the Ferro Concept Dangler, which is a really nice location. Easy access, both hands down your center line, grab it very quickly. And then this resides in my cargo pocket. So if I would be relieved of my pack or relieved of this for some reason, tear off of me, doesn't work anymore, I get thrown, I just think of all the crazy things that could happen. At least there's something physically on my pants. So as long as I don't lose my pants, which would be very awkward and weird, then you pretty much have some kind of means to patch you up. So ultimately that's what I go with. This stuff right here, it weighs 7.7 .7 ounces. This one weighs 7.8 if I recall. So altogether you're looking at about you know, 14, 15 ounces. So under a pound for reasonable capability and the whole philosophy, 
is avoidance beforehand. I do not plan to go after people or to plan to get into a firefight. I am avoiding and I'm getting from my point A to my point B quickly and unnoticed as possible. That's the whole point of this IFAC. Cool. So if you guys like this kind of stuff, want to see more, dive into it, that kind of stuff, definitely like, subscribe, give me a comment. What do you run? Do you like running a full trauma kit? Do you like running just a tourniquet? Where is it in, in between? Do you like that kind of stuff? Definitely like to hear from you, how you've adopted. MetTC comes into that. It's your bag. You run it the way you want to. These are just some ideas that you can be thinking of to get you more maybe better or worse off, depending on how you look at it. But other than that, I hope you all have a great day.